Yes, that this uh, scene is uh, a look at the Toronto skyline between the CN Tower and the high-rise condos that now exist in the Etobicoke area. And yet, I imagine this is what it did look like uh, in Toronto before European settlers came and changed the landscape completely and moved the First Nations people who lived here from this site and their place names with it. So as a kid growing up alongside the Humber River, I had always been interested in envisioning what it looked like in the past. I know names like Indian Road and Indian Trail, Indian Grove and Wendigo Way, all kind of point to a history that I knew nothing about. And I've only learned recently that many of the main roads in Toronto, like Western Road and Davenport and Indian Road, are laid over Indigenous roots. When I was introduced to my partner's family cottage at Lake Simcoe, I learned that it was originally called Lac Toronto, and the name derives from a Mohawk word meaning trees in the water. And that is fishing weirs. Some of the stakes are 5,000 years old, so at the time of the pyramids. People in the area, many of them know nothing about it, and certainly people in Toronto don't realize that that's where the city's name originates. Humber Bay was just one of the roots of First Nations people to that important fish harvesting site. It's a very narrow section of land, and First Nations people had put stakes in the water to capture fish. To capture large fish, because the stakes were far enough apart that smaller fish could get through, and those are the, the fishing weirs. So the reason we know that the stakes have been there for thousands of years is they've been carbon dated by Parks Canada. And they still exist because underwater there's no oxygen, and so the wood hasn't rotted. The Chippewas of Rama First Nation still consider themselves the stewards of this sacred place in the Aurelia Narrows where Lake Kuchiching and Lake Simcoe meet. In the beginning, um, it was it belonged to Parks Canada, and not to us. And today, it belongs to both of us. We're at a new place in our relationship where we jointly co-manage what's what's still there. And just like First Nations in this area, the fishing weirs are still here, despite the ravages of European settlement, the destruction caused by railways and highways the dredging of waterways, and the development of land. The Majikining Fish Fence Circle is a group of Indigenous and non-Indigenous people working together to protect it. I joined the Majikining Fish Fence Circle because I want the fishing weirs to be cared for and respected, to be honoured and celebrated. They have important things to say about our past and about who we can become. We'd like more people to learn about the fishing weirs that gave Toronto its name so that they can be protected from the intense development that's taking place in areas north of the city. Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, hey, uh.